Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome back to Weekly Discussion. On this segment, we will be talking about the Pakistani international air crash, which killed 48 people, including artist Jamid Jamshid. Have, so what do you think? Oh, gosh, it's quite sad, isn't it? Um, 44 people died? 48. 48 people. I know because um, Junaid Jamshed yeah. is a pop star who turned into a Nasheed artist and I think he was supposed to come to Islamic Relief's um, Evening or Inspiration. He was one of the artists that was mentioned to think like we plan for the future but we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was quite, I mean like when I saw, saw the story today actually and I was quite surprised, I was quite saddened by yeah. what happened. Obviously it's Allah's will, you know, we believe, you know, mm. it's, but it's quite, s s I don't know, it's just... Uh, yeah, I think there was something along the line of the... the Have you listened? I mean, do you know him much quite well, the um, singer? I know there was a controversy around him recently with mm. things, the way he does his nasheed mm. and um, stuff like that. I don't think I should. I, yeah. I do want to go into stuff like that now okay. that he's passed away. But um, generally, I think even with the other people who passed away, I think it's quite saddening because um, it was a plane crash, it was an accident, and the fact that they couldn't land and they were out of petrol mm. and everything like that, it's just... It's just you can't tell when things could happen, mm. and it's quite yeah. just feel for the family, to be honest. Mm. I don't know, do you know what happened with that story? Like, why or how it. Um, well, from my understanding, I mm. think the. The plane was running out of fuel, and mm. I think they couldn't land, so mm. it had a crash. But then, saying that. Um, Think Imran Khan tweeted saying shocked and saddened by the mm. tragic PIA plane crash near Haval. May Allah give them families of disease courage. So it's actually gathered international mm. um, figures attention and everyone's been tweeting about it. And yeah, it's just I think 90 meters, um, the plane took off from Chitral about 10, like fifth, um, 3 o'clock local time losing contact 90 minutes later shortly before it was due to arrive at its destination that was reported by the local mm. media pakistani tv must show trials of wreckage engulfed in flames on mountain mm. slope the army has dispatched troops helicopters to the location and um yeah basically um mm. it there was four sorry there was 48 people on board and um yeah 44 people died so yeah. Because sort of, it was recently that um, the Brazil airplane crashed as well and they had a whole football team of Brazilian football players that died as well. I know. Um, and that wasn't very long ago, about a week ago, a week and a half ago, I think. Yeah, it was. A, it was mm. yeah. And I remember that was quite, sort of, I saw the funeral. I know, I think mm. um, this story is sort of making me emotional, so we'll, I think yeah. we'll just leave it to yeah. a side and th talk about Should something that's which is story? <laughs> current, something yeah. that I think um, it also mm. affects the... Bangladeshi community, it's basically on private hire taxi drivers, London could face a written English test. Yeah. Now, what does that mean? Because <coughs> it was just mm. only a report that we covered that's mm. saying that Bengalis need to integrate due to language barrier and then you got this. I'm sure I'm sure it wasn't interrelated, but however, it does make you question mm. what is this about? Because up until now, taxi drivers were fine. They didn't need to do an English test. I mean, I could understand if they had a basic like language, obviously, to understand um, where they're going mm. and who they're picking think, up. But this yeah. is taking it a bit further, isn't this it? This is talking about written test. And mm. I think um, what's happening is that a lot of, um, I know it's, it's, it's directed by Uber, yeah. but there's a whole sort of, protest um, about this because what they're saying is that that's fine they can understand the oral test and need you to speak the English language and ha being able to have communication but the written test is a whole different kettle of fish. Do you think fish. it's a money-making scheme because if you're charging per driver 200 pounds per test and bear in mind people who drive the reason a lot of people drive taxi it's because they don't speak the language and it's not an office job where you need to do tests and the fact that if they redo the test mm. they will fail and they will yes it, i don't know because it's almost like it's almost like i think what it is what they're saying is that 
people need to be able to speak the language, be able to read and write to understand the safety regulations. And there's a lot of mm. updates um, th that takes place. And if you don't speak the language, then you won't, you won't know, you won't be able to protect your drivers or won't be able to stay updated with the recent legislation, what have you. But then what could happen is that the companies that um, sort of own those, uh, they could actually train their own staff in their own language. And I don't think it's necessarily the case that you need to speak English because if you look at a lot of local cab offices, mm. um, I mean in Tower Hamlets where my local cab office, you know, I've used them for years and years and years, and not all the, I mean the drivers generally have a working English, but they don't necessarily, not all of them are going to be able to read and write. And I think what some of the people, like from some of the stuff I've been reading, mm. well, uh, there's, a comp there's actually a petition that's gone out. Yes, and I actually also signed it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I do remember signing it. Also, yeah. that actually yeah. did a petition about yeah. this whole English test, and she sent it to Sadiq Khan. Yeah, like, yeah. And, yeah, and I th I, what they were saying in that petition is, she was saying that my dad has been uh, driving, uh, has been a private taxi driver for the last ten years. Mm -hmm. He has working English, but if you were to ask him to sit down and do an English test, which is almost equivalent or similar, I think they said level two. Mm -hmm. Level two is GCSE level, right? Yeah. So if you're asking someone who, you know, s her, uh, she's saying, if you ask my dad. To sit down to do an English test, most likely he might not pass it. So then, what happens to him? He, f he you know, he becomes he's he loses his license. So and what does this mean? Does this mean people who fail the test have got nothing else to do than sit on benefit? Because I don't know. Because I think it's going to affect the Bengali community. It's going to really affect the Bengali yeah, community because a lot of Bengali community don't work in the restaurant at yeah. the moment. They're all moving away from it. Um, in terms with for that generation of people, because. They're not so literate. Mm. That's why they're not in an office job. Or do they go mm. into care work? Again, it, isn't it the same it's thing? No, because... Uh, Are you trying to... Yeah. I mean, for me, I know it feels like what you're trying to say is you're trying to encourage people to go back into work. But then at the same time, you're taking the tools away from them and See, then you're making them sit feel, on benefit. Yeah, I feel very strongly about this because I feel like, you know, if you look at our Bangladeshi community, when they first mm. came here, you have the garments um, sort of factory sector. Yeah. And a lot of mine and my dad, he worked in the factory, like a lot of Bangladeshi yeah. people that first came here. Slowly that died away and then a lot of the Bangladeshi community they went into industries like the, you know the restaurant trade and then that uh, and the, the taxi service. Yeah. It's almost like they're coming they're literally trying to take a you know take this sector away from these communities mm. that have been many of them have been cab drivers for 10 years 15 yeah. years 20 years and I think what the petition was saying is that if you've been a driver for more than five years you should be exempt from the written test. Mm. No one is sort of like no one is arguing about the oral test. Yeah. Because you okay, need to or, have or test working is something English. Yeah, of course, because yeah. if you've got a passenger yeah. and they need to get from A to B, you need to understand where they're going yeah. and you need to know the streets and everything else. And I guess with these new um, mm. phone apps such as yeah. Uber, it tells you direction. So I think basic reading is not a, a, a guess. Yeah. But then saying that, people have managed. They've come this far mm. and people, it's people from that sort of generation were into cabbing and that's what they mm. did for a livelihood so what are we saying are we saying that we're going to take away jobs from them is that what we're saying Cause if because if they can't pass the test because yeah, you've got i don't know maybe i'm being a bit suspicious but i just wonder because you know like i wonder whether it's the case that i mean i know that you've got in the black taxi cabs so mm. you know they're big in the uk and now you have your uber and uber lit one of the people that are fighting this by the way is uber because a lot of their yeah. drivers some of them aren't you know some they don't have very good command of english and Uber's trying to expand. So I don't know whether it's the case that this is something between Uber and the black tag, you know, the black cab service, yeah. who are literally, you know, they, they, I don't know. I've, I've read somewhere where they say, uh, where someone actually asked that question. Is it the case that there's something more to it? Is it a way of trying to protect the black cab service? Mm. Or is it the case that, I don't know, is it the case that it would drive people into unemployment? And now that we know that we have the benefit cap, if people are in unemployment, in unemployment, taking unemployment benefit, yeah. and if they have um, s sort of, if the rent is more than a certain amount, they could be driven out of London, right? Because they won't be able to afford to Wouldn't stay in the UK. Wouldn't that fall under I mean discrimination as well? I don't know because um, because what they're arguing is they're saying for health and safety, you need to have a certain level of English, and if you take that argument, it's very Do difficult you know to what? argue. You know, the thing that has always, always. Had mm. I always had a question mark and it always mm. bothered me. I mean, we're talking about taxi drivers here yeah. taking an English written test. However, we have counsellors who can't speak <laughs> the language, can't write. So how could they be exempt being in a professional post? And we're, foc we're actually trying to attack a community who is looking after Maybe their family. Get, 
councillors to come and do English tests. <laughs> I know, because this in itself, these people mm. are hardworking people. Yeah. They're providing for the family. They're not on benefit. Mm. They're not ripping anyone off. They're actually trying to be part of the society. Yeah. Again, goes back into the whole integration argument of people trying to fit in, getting themselves a job, staying away from the social benefit. Mm. But you're attacking them, the small minority. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like... Why are the, all the attacks on the minority community where it people does are feel working that way. hard? Yeah, I mean, at the same mm. time, again, but then again, you, you could argue it's not because you've got counsellors from the minority community who don't speak the language. Forget about written and write. So if they can't articulate their own needs, how the hell are they going to articulate the res residents' need? It's just yeah, no, it's it's completely not too extreme. <laughs> do you not no, I agree with you. I mean, I mean, if you're talking about the councillor thing, I think it's the case that I think what they argue is that as long as someone can represent the community in whichever language it is, then they have a right to stand for council. But I don't know how they're going to then represent them in the council because you need to have but a certain amount exactly. of language to be able to do that. That's the thing, though. Isn't that contradiction in terms? Because these people, they understand their passenger. They have in the past from taken yeah. from A to mm. B. And it has never been a problem up until now that they ha it's compulsory for them mm. not to do. Well, it hasn't been implemented yet, but it'll be, it will be compulsory for them not to do a written test. Mm. But then you've got people in professions where language should. Okay, fair enough. It represents a particular community. But however, if you're going to represent a particular community, you should be in a position of representing. If you're not going to focus on them, I think it's not fair for you to focus on this community. Mm. Again, it's the policy makers. It's not only about no, I agree with who you, brings Sabia, in more votes. It's about... Yeah. I mean, if we were to put two of these issues, they're both equally mm. as important. I think this one, this per this is a family trying to feed itself. Because if you take this away mm. from them, then you're p telling them you're going to sit on benefit. But this That's is taking away confidence. Yeah. Mm. Everything away from a person. You're taking everything away. Not... People can't live on benefit. Yeah. It's not practical. See, Sadiq Khan can do something about this if he wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. And Sadiq Khan, who's our London mayor. So I think that th maybe we need to lobby him. We need to do something about this because yeah. I feel really annoyed. I feel quite angry because I feel that this is a community that's struggling, that's working hard. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're paying their taxes. They're doing everything, you know, to sort of look after a family. And then you're coming along and then you're making it harder for these people. You know, and it's what where are the, what are they supposed to do? And it's actually, to be honest, I feel they're discriminating against. Okay, they're okay. discriminating against Let's move on Asian to men because <laughs> <laughs> predominantly it's Asian men. I mean, like Bengali men that are in this industry. So on one hand, this uh, yeah. Anyway, okay. Anyway, we move to let's the next move story? to okay. the next one. Supreme so Court. Brex next it's, okay. it's on Brexit. The ongoing oh, debate yeah, for a long yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, I, was, I was reading that. What do you think? <sighs> What, what comes to mind when you I mean, like, what else do you think? I yeah, go think, on. right, okay, yeah. fair enough. I mean, I wasn't for the Brexit. Mm. Um, well, I wasn't, sorry, I wasn't for as lot leaving the U EU. Mm. But thing is, I think, yes, we had the vote. We've decided, the majority voted. I know there are arguments around the fact that people didn't know what they voted mm. for. Je you can't assume <coughs> that about the general public. Mm. I mean, some knew what they were voting for, some didn't. But however, whatever the reason is, mm. we've had it then, we've voted, let's move on to the next stage. Yeah. So for me, it's this whole thing. I know there are debates around um, the re-elections and Which everything else. Which way did you vote? Oh, <laughs> well, do you know what? I voted opposite to my husband. Oh, really? So we both That's had really two different votes. Okay. Yeah. So we okay. both actually... Uh -huh. On two different votes. Oh, okay, though, yeah. fair enough. But, I, mean, I wanted to stay in the EU. Okay, now I you just told everybody yeah, that so he voted out. <laughs> so, yeah, so for me, like, I know I voted to stay in, but yeah. we didn't. Like we wanted that. So now that yeah. we've gone past that stage, I think we should move on to the next. No, I agree, because I think what, there's, there's a whole lobby group who are absolutely against uh, the UK leaving mm -hmm. the European Union. And I think what they're arguing is they do have a point. I think the challenge that um, I think when they took the legal challenge, it was the argument that you need to get parliamentary approval before you can take the next step in terms of triggering Article 50. So the Article 50 is what would mm. trigger us our exit out of the EU. Yeah. So what they're saying is that Theresa May has no right to take that um, upon herself. Mm. But the argument is if the public have already voted to yeah. leave, then surely it's just a matter of just um, administrate, you know, just processing that. And I think what um, 
So now what the government have done is they've taken it, they've gone to the Supreme Court. And so they're arguing and um, there's about 11 judges who are going to look at that. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to decide whether it should go through parliament or not. I mean, they do talk about like how um, they have a plan and they know what they're doing. But yeah. do you really think they have a plan? Because if they had a plan, we've we would have heard mm -hmm. something by now. Because yeah. I mean, it feels like it's being prolonged the whole case. Yeah. And, um, I think from my understanding, what the Labour sort of, you know, the people that chat in the, the people, some of the MPs, what they're arguing is that you need to have some kind of plan of exit it before you trigger the Article 50. Yeah. Uh, Theresa May is saying, well, we've got two years, so we'll figure it out. But I don't like this whole idea of figuring out. I think you surely need perhaps to have some kind of plan. Perhaps they don't even know what they're doing. I think yeah. they're all going, like, they're just yeah. trotting along, hoping for something to come. Because they didn't know. I mean, David Cameron, I'm sure he didn't sort of... Go on. Uh, yeah, so, so what were you saying, sorry? Yeah, so I'm sure, like, when they... I don't know, it just seems like we're getting conflicting messages. And the point is that if, um, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen, but we're going to find out in four days. I think in January, it's gonna, we're going to find out what the situation is and whether we need to go for Parliament to... So we'll, let's wait and see what happens. Do you think by taking this to the Parliament will be a good thing or a bad um, Because thing? then it's the case that MPs will now be in a position where they have to vote for or against it. And I think, I don't know quite know what the general, I mean, I know the Labour Party is going to vote against it and then you've got a lot of people that are Remainers in Parliament. And so it might be the case that there's more Remainers than there are um, ex people that are willing to exit the EU. And I think that's what some of the concerns are. That mm. um, that's that if it does go to parliament it might yeah. go against the public vote do you feel like um the pres um she's trying to push the mps to vote either way but she just wants it to come for um forward um i don't know because it sounds like i mean it sounds like she's not wanting this because otherwise why would they go to the supreme court they would have accepted the judge's um rulings so they're saying no we want we want to make that decision i mean it's i mean surely like she would she would have accepted it and said okay fine let's go to parliament and well, let's open it up to our audience. Um, what do our audience think of this Brexit? Do you, um, how do you feel? Um, feel free to call us in the studio and air your opinion. Um, do you have a number? The number <laughs> is written on the okay, screen. That's fine. So. Okay, so let's see what happens. We're gonna f I think mm. it will come out sooner or later and then we'll see. But you know, it would be pretty sad if all of us voted. No, I'm not trying to say, I mean, I'm not mm. going to say which way I voted or, or not. Okay. But if if let's say imagine I'm talking about the majority of people, if they did vote out, yeah. Um I'm sure now we're gonna have Nigel Farage come back. <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> he's gonna be like, because I think the well he's he's the face of the Brexit, right? He's the one that's seen as being the you know, the poster boy of See, uh, from, the Brexit. For me, campaign. when the whole Brexit happened, I don't think even Nigel Farage thought. No, I don't it was think he be. did. I don't think I anyone think David thought. David Cameron would have, you know, he, he never didn't gamble his job on it. Of course. he had to leave. He had I to know. resign. So sh I think people assumed it's going to go the other direction. Yeah, because no one really campaigned for it. Because when the whole thing happened, I think if you were interested in finding mm. out, you did your own research. Because mm. there, wasn't, there wasn't a lot of campaigning from any party. And I think it took everyone by surprise. Mm. Even Boris um, pulled out in the last minute as well. So most of these senior mm. members, political members, pulled out on the last minute so it wasn't like something that mm. they were all um, preparing themselves for because i think what the argument is it's going to be a huge financial repercussion on the uk and us it leaving will. the eu it means leaving the single market there's there's a lot of um so it brings up a lot of complications but at the same mm. time i think people who did vote to leave i think th what they're arguing for is the case that let's try and see what it's like outside the eu and then it you know, i guess there's no option to come back i know scotland's yeah. been really distressed about the whole thing and they don't want they want to stay um in the eu and they've even tried to negotiate some kind of deals but it hasn't really gone in their favor but then i think there has been an argument that maybe the opposition people who are against mm. um sort of leaving remainers actually funny you mentioned yeah. that because i think there was somewhere that i read tony blair wants to use it as an opportunity to, to come, come back oh my yeah, god I, I saw that as well i was like did you see I it i was like what i was it was on with the radio i was yeah. listening to the radio and i was like what he wants to come back because somehow he feels there's a uh, there's a vacancy or there's a vacuum and that he's the only one that will be able to i know and i just don't like his tone of his voice because so he doesn't arrogant. speak like a member of Labour Party. He, he, he speaks like a yeah. senior, like he's on the leadership yeah. and he's like saying this is how it is and this is how it's going to be done and he just thinks from nowhere he'll come, take over the party again. Solve and the problems. Yeah, but then he's yeah. very careful with how he words his stuff because it's mm. not really 
attacking or he, he I think he's using language really well. He could what is it, Jeremy Corbyn? I'm not attacking him. I was I was yeah. reading that and I was like, Okay, okay, so what are you then? Uh, I mean forget that. I mean trickle okay. inquiry, we know what happened yeah. as a result of that and he's I don't understand what premise he thinks that he's somehow justified that people would want him back into the Labour Party. And the majority of the Labour Party voted for Jeremy Corbyn. So under what, why would, I mean, that's a way of saying that we, they voted against, you know, yeah, against, oh yeah. uh, you know, like Tony Blair. And we, they went, they turned left, uh, centre left a bit more on the left as a result. So why would the Labour members voting back in? I don't quite understand where the logic is with I that. think for me, I think it's more of his tone of his voice that he thought he could come back in and then sort of... Yeah like say this is my show and this is how it's going <laughs> to happen and Brexit was like something that he yeah. thought yeah it's a tool for me I don't yeah. know how you feel but yeah. yeah I just yeah I just feel like I mean uh, Tony Blair I mean he's made a huge amount of mistakes and I think the Chilka inquiry totally slated him and, and I think there's a lot of people who, would, who, who wouldn't want to see him back and I think it's pretty arrogant maybe that he feels that somehow so he, he can somehow come in and I mean and I think some people were out saying how that if he t though I heard this debate that had Tony Blair stayed mm -hmm. would we have still had the Labour government but the thing is he left he left knowing that the it was going down that yeah, you know, that's we were in a really left. bad position because when he left yeah. the country was, uh, Labour Party people were already was rising yeah. against him and that's one of the reasons why he left because he felt like okay the tide is going against me yeah. so he put T Gordon Brown in such a situation that when he left Tony Bra uh, you know, Gordon Brown wasn't going to sort of rescue, you know, the situation. So anyway, so that, yeah, I was pretty annoyed when I, when <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I just thought it was pretty cheeky. I, know, I, I actually thought that, but let's see what happens yeah. with the Brexit. Yes. I mean, we're still... We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get the result in January. Yeah, so. I mean, now that it's um, like... The, the it report. just feels like it's been prolonged for so long. Yeah. I think for me, it's like, just okay, fair enough. Now. <laughs> we had a vote, we <laughs> said what we had to, we've moaned, yeah. we've grown, we've po gave yeah. arguments on both sides, mm. now just get on with it because um, they're talking about immigration being a problem but you've got a deadline, people mm. whoever wants to come in they'll flood in, mm. people are not going to come and take over your job so there's no point of the whole scaremongering mm. and everything else and I think I think it'd only be fair um, if that's what they want to do if they just got on with it and mm. sort of um, again I think I'd like to hear what the viewers have to say it'd be nice to know what your opinions are because we all voted mm. stay or leave whichever way you voted you don't have to disclose that with us just tell us how you feel we're gonna take a short break at the moment but do any subject that we talk about if, if you feel like calling in just call us in after the um, after the break and uh, we'll take your calls then we'll see you in a bit take care assalamualaikum <laughs>